Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of March. Opposition demands interior minister's resignation over Delhi violence. Afghan president rejects Taliban prisoner release clause in U.S. deal. And Nepal defers tourism promotion campaign amid coronavirus outbreak. Now for all the details, opposition lawmakers demanded the resignation of Interior Minister Amit Shah over last week's violence in the Indian capital as the parliament reconvened on Monday for the second half of the budget session. This came as the death toll jumped to at least 47 in the violence over the new citizenship law. An uproar was witnessed in Indian parliament as the proceedings in the second part of the budget session resumed on Monday with opposition lawmakers raising their voices against the last week's violence in the Indian capital over the Citizenship Amendment Act. Both houses of the parliament, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, had to be adjourned over the uproar soon after initiating proceedings. However, the lawmakers of opposition Congress party continued to protest even after the adjournment and demanded resignation of Interior Minister Amit Shah over the violence. गलती से उनकी नाकामी उनकी नकम्मी से इस तरीके की भयानक हिंसा घटना घटी है इसके चलते सारा हिंदुस्तान की हमारा छवि भी धूमिल हो रहे हैं और मौत की कतार दिन पे दिन बढ़ते जा रहा है लेकिन लेकिन सरकार चुप्पी साधे है Meanwhile there was a semblance of normalcy as heavy security deployment remained in place in parts of northeast Delhi where the violence erupted over the new citizenship law the death toll in Delhi violence mounted to at least 47 on Monday. A panel of European and Indian parliamentarians held a discussion over India's Citizenship Amendment Act and the situation of Muslims in India on the sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva. Indian parliamentarian MJ Akbar defended the law and said that it does not affect Muslims in India in any way. A panel of European and Indian parliamentarians along with religious leaders held a discussion over the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act or CAA and the situation of Muslims in India on the sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva this past weekend. Indian parliamentarian MJ Akbar said, India's most important characteristic is its plurality and the constitution gives equal rights to every citizen irrespective of religion. He said CAA which paves way for persecuted non-Muslims from three neighboring countries for Indian citizenship does not affect Indian Muslims in any way. At no point because of this law was an Indian Muslim, I repeat, I am an Indian Muslim, ever denied his rights living in India. There was no re reduction in his existing rights. Former EU parliamentarian Paolo Casaca noted that there was a disinformation campaign going on in Europe regarding the law. Citizenship Amendment Act will also protect these religious minorities from the evils of forced conversion to Islam in these Islamic nations. The new citizenship law has drawn nationwide protests since it was given nod in the parliament in December last year. Critics say the CAA undermines the secular fabric of India as it excludes Muslims. The Indian government has however denied any bias. Moving on, a banner Pakistani army epicenter of international terrorism was displayed at the iconic broken chair during the 43rd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva to draw the attention to the global terrorism that is based in Pakistan. 
A banner with the slogan Pakistani Army Epicenter of International Terrorism was put up recently at the iconic broken chair during the 43rd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. The banner aimed to draw attention to global terrorism emanating from Pakistan and to urge the UN to take immediate steps to deal with the threats to global security. Pakistan has been accused of human rights abuses on religious minorities, Baloch, Sindhi communities and its long-standing policy of conducting cross-border terrorism against its neighbours. Since 9-11, Pakistan has been the epicentre of international terrorism. In the recently concluded group meetings and the plenary session of International Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force or FATF, Pakistan failed to comply with the 27-point action plan to control funding to terrorist groups. It was given another deadline of four months and will continue to be on FATF's grey list till June 2020. The FATF noted that Pakistan addressed only 14 of 27 action items given to it for controlling funding to terror groups like the Lashkar-e-Taiba and Jashim Muhammad, responsible for series of attacks in India. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani has rejected a Taliban demand for the release of 5,000 prisoners as a condition for talks with the Afghan government, included in a deal between the United States and the Islamist militants. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has rejected the release of 5,000 prisoners as stated in the deal reached by the United States and the Taliban. The remarks came a day after a landmark deal between the United States and Taliban aimed at ending the U.S.'s longest war was signed on Saturday. The accord said that up to 5,000 jailed Taliban members would be released in exchange for up to 1,000 Afghan government captives by March 10. H after months of negotiations and nearly 20 years of war, the U.S. and the Taliban on February 29 signed an agreement set to pave the way for the withdrawal of all U.S and NATO troops from Afghanistan and a commitment by the Taliban that Afghan territory will not be used to launch attacks on other countries. There are high hopes that the agreement will be followed by intra-Afghan talks between all major stakeholders. The Taliban had long refused to sit down with the Afghan government, calling it a puppet regime. The four-part agreement sets March 10 as the date for an intra-Afghan dialogue with Ghani's government. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has said that any reservations Afghanistan has with Islamabad should be resolved bilaterally rather than involving the United States. This came in reference to part of a joint U.S.-Afghan declaration on peace efforts that took place on Saturday. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said on Sunday that any reservations Afghanistan has with Islamabad should be resolved bilaterally rather than involving the United States in reference to part of a joint U.S.-Afghan declaration on peace efforts. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper and NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg announced the declaration on Saturday at a ceremony to coincide with the signing in Doha of an agreement between the Taliban and the United States. Referring to Washington's intent to withdraw troops from Afghanistan, the foreign minister said, the U.S. is planning to withdraw and we will always remain neighbors. You should realize that the United States is, uh, you know, uh, planning to, uh, you know, withdraw, you know, uh, from Afghanistan. And we will always remain neighbors. So a direct approach should be given preference to, you know, if I have an issue with uh, Afghanistan, I will not ask Washington to play a role, I will speak to Kabul directly. Pakistan and Afghanistan have been at loggerheads for years. 
Kabul publicly blames Pakistan for harboring Taliban leaders after they were ousted from power in Afghanistan in 2001 and allowing safe havens for attacks against international and Afghan forces. Nepal government has deferred the international tourism promotional activities planned as part of Visit Nepalia 2020 campaign due to the coronavirus epidemic that has killed more than 3,000 people worldwide. The government of Nepal has deferred the international tourism promotional activities planned as part of the Visit Nepal Year 2020 campaign due to the novel coronavirus epidemic, a Nepali cabinet minister has said. It is a major setback for the Himalayan nation which under the campaign Visit Nepal Year 2020 targeted to attract 2 million foreign tourists, almost double from foreign tourist arrivals in 2019. The top 10 countries from where Nepal gets tourists are on high alert. Neighboring India has also been screening passengers arriving from Nepal. Four persons suspected to have infected with coronavirus are admitted to an isolation ward of a hospital. They include three Nepalese who had returned from South Korea recently and a Chinese national. On February 16, the Himalayan nation airlifted its 175 citizens from China's Wuhan, the epicenter of coronavirus. Around 34 couples belonging to economically weaker sections of the society tied the nuptial knot at a mass wedding ceremony organized in India's western Gujarat province on Sunday. Mass weddings are usually organized by charity organizations and business tycoons in India as a form of public service. As many as 34 couples tied the nuptial knot at a mass wedding ceremony held in Surat city of India's western Gujarat province on Sunday. Couples dressed in ethnic attires performed marriage rituals according to Hindu traditions in the ceremony jointly organized by two charitable trusts. The newlyweds were also presented gifts consisting of household items deemed basic necessities for the beginning of a new life. ये कार्यक्रम समूह लग्न का है और 34 युगल इसमें जुड़े हुए हैं और ये सब मध्यम वर्ग और गरीब वर्ग की लड़कियां हैं और जो कार्यक्रम हो रहा है इसमें हम तुलसी का क्यारा और हेलमेट भी करियावर में दे रहे हैं नॉन गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस ट्रस्ट एंड बिजनेस टाइकूंस इन इंडिया हैव बीन फंडिंग मास वेडिंग्स फॉर इयर्स नाउ एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ पब्लिक सर्विस सब बहुत अच्छा है आयोजन भी बहुत अच्छा किया है यहाँ से कन्यावरण भी बहुत अच्छा आया है सब आयोजन भी बहुत अच्छा है मास वेडिंग्स आर इंक्रीजिंगली बिकमिंग पॉपुलर स्पेशली अमंग द इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शंस ऑफ द इंडियन सोसाइटी एस इट रिड्यूस वरीज ऑफ मॉनेटरी इंप्लिकेशंस अमंग पेरेंट्स it is said that a good hearty laugh can bring about health benefits and helps one become a positive thinking person. HIV positive children in India's western Surat city on Sunday laughed their hearts out at a laughter yoga therapy session bringing cheer to life. HIV positive children on Sunday laughed their hearts out at a laughter yoga therapy session bringing cheer to life in India's western Surat city. Over 400 participants, including children and their parents, turned up for the session, guided by Kamlesh Masalawala, who is known as Laughter Guru. Participants were seen enjoying the therapy as they giggled and hooted with laughter in unison. So, we thought that this is a very good moment in our lives, to share people with us. And they were so happy, 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 भगवान करे इनके जीवन में हमेशा ऐसी खुशी बरकरार रहे। Laughter yoga helps one to become a positive thinking person. It is a form of yoga involving prolonged voluntary laughter. Although not scientifically proven, it is said a good hearty laugh can bring about health benefits, including improving blood circulation, lowering stress, relieving pain, and strengthening body's immune system, which can help fight diseases. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all, Internet Edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.